My boss refuses to turn off utility lines for any reason. Am I out of line for refusing to work live service conductors? All right, so this was a question that was sent in on Reddit from amazing underscore swordfish. 206. So here's a good question, right? Like we, a lot of times as electricians, apprentices, if you're not familiar with this yet, we'll get thrown into situations where we have to make a decision. Are we going to work on this live or are we going to try to do something to shut power off? Now, if it's as simple as like you have a panel and you can go turn a breaker off and then go work on a switch, we'll obviously always do that. Like it's our job as electricians, we work on dangerous stuff, right? So it's our job to always try to minimize risk or eliminate risk because it's either that or you just, your kid doesn't have a dad anymore. <laughs> you know, like it's, there are situations where yes, we do have to work on live circuits. Sometimes there's plenty of PPE out there. There's specific situations in which companies have created a lot of products to be able to have electricians work on these energized situations when absolutely necessary. Now, there are some people out there that will say it is never necessary to work on live circuits. You should absolutely 100% never, ever, ever in your career, ever, period, ever work on electricity hot. I don't agree with that, but I do agree that if you're going to be doing that, that you need proper training, you need proper PPE, hot gloves, face shields, the whole nine yards, flash suit, you know, if you're working on a switch gear or something like that at a facility where there's like $10 million processes running and they're not shutting this down so you can change out this $100 breaker, you know, stop their entire process, lose millions of dollars. So there's situations like that that'll come up. Um, then there's situations where like there's an emergency and something is like burnt and overprotection, uh, overcurrent protection is not possible or there's just some kind of a situation where you might not actually physically be able to shut power off. Now, in this situation, it sounds like they might be talking about like rebuilding an electrical service. So uh, if you're out in the country somewhere and you're just trying to like disassemble a service or you're trying to do a panel swap or something like that or maybe the panel is bad there's something wrong with it but you don't want to have to call the power company to come out like you should and disconnect the meter like you should and then have it all worked on like you should <laughs> and you know pull a permit like you should uh then a lot of people will just work on them live. And one thing people will do is they'll take the lugs, take the wires off, tape them up really good with some electrical tape. Um, and then they, you know, pull the entire panel out and everything and they're not going to get popped. Depending on the situation, sometimes things happen, you can still get popped. Uh, but then you've got live conductors coming off of a live meter. Uh, but the reason people do this is because these electronic meters nowadays, the second you pull one out, it pings the utility company to let them know that there's a power outage. Um, and so then some utility company truck will come up and they'll look and see you working on something and then you get a $10,000 fine or whatever the situation is. Um, so a lot of times, older electrician, not even just older electricians, a lot of just electricians that are like, dude, I don't wanna have to fucking deal with all of that. They need this done right now and I just gotta do it. So that might be one reason that they're talking about doing this. But for, for my advice to you, if you're not comfortable working on live conductors, it's up to you to say something about it. And if he's gonna fire you, fuck it, dude. Go work at a different company for somebody that's not gonna jeopardize your life and put your life at risk. If he's like yelling at you or, uh, you know, like forcing you to do something, you need to be able to stand firmly in your position and be like, I'm not comfortable with this. You wanna do this, you work on them hot. And as a master electrician, you should be the one doing hot work if you're going to be doing something like that. And you should know the level of capability of all the people under you because you're training them. And if you haven't trained them to do something and they feel sketchy about it, you're an asshole if you're gonna try to throw them into something that they don't feel ready for. Now, if they've been doing the work for a really long time and you've been trying to introduce them to working hot and you have all the proper PPE and you're doing everything right and they're just scared, you know, again, there's only so much you can do for that. Like, I don't think it's worth firing somebody because of that. Just get off your lazy ass and do it yourself. You know, it's it's your liability. 
it's you're the one that has to pay for all of the risk if something happens. You're the one that's gonna lose out on the return of investment of uh, having an employee there in the first place. Like if you get somebody hurt, you get somebody killed, if they're doing the work, you're still the one liable. It's still your responsibility. So ultimately, um, dude, I, I honestly don't think that you're in the wrong here. I think if you're not comfortable doing stuff, you're not comfortable. I work with some guys, like one, one of the dudes that I know, um, is, he's been a, an electrician for seven years. And to this day, I don't think he fully understands how you get shocked or electrocuted. I think he still kind of has this suspicion that if there's just one wire that's hot, and there's nothing else, you just like touching that wire that you're gonna get shocked and that's not how shocks and electrocutions work. Current always flows between one thing to another. So it's always between two points. So if you give a hot, a path through your body to ground or just, you know, something metal that's connected to ground, it, you're giving it a path to go all the way back up to the transformer. If you touch the hot to another hot, well, one wire goes to the transformer, the other one goes to the transformer. It's going through your body, that shit can go right through your heart and kill you. So that's how you get electrocuted. But like, I've done videos where I'm like, look, don't try this at home. I'm a master electrician. I take liability. I'm not responsible for blah, 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 right? But I touch one conductor and it doesn't do anything. But if you touch that and you touch another thing, like hot to neutral, hot to hot, hot to ground, hot to a piece of metal that happens to be grounded, you will absolutely get shocked or electrocuted. And electrocution is where you die. Shock is just where you bzzzt <laughs> a little bit. Uh, I shouldn't laugh at that, it's not funny. I actually take this shit really seriously. Like there's some YouTube channels out there where there's like electrical engineers that like purposefully shock themselves and then like put all these comical things to try to make it funny. And I think it's really fucking irresponsible to be out there teaching people that it's funny to shock yourself because um, you can get killed. I know people, I've heard a lot of stories. I know other electricians who have friends that have died working on electrical. It's not fucking funny and you need to be careful. That being said, there is a point where you feel comfortable after a while once you understand fully how things work and how a current flows and, and you feel comfortable stepping into something like that, then I think it's absolutely okay to do that. There are some jobs where you can't do the job, like you can't be a lineman if you're not going to go through the training and work on energizing and de-energizing stuff with, you know, face shield, hard hat, uh, hot gloves, a hot stick, and, and you have to learn that stuff. But if that's not what you want to do, if you never want to get to the point of doing that, then that's something that you probably need to tell employers because I think most employers are going to expect you at some point to be trained to work on live conductors. But the way that they should be doing that is they should be there present for it. They should show you how it's done talk to you about all the proper PPE, show you what can happen if you do this and that, and just teach you and maybe do that a couple of times before ever getting you involved. And I don't think this is something like you're three months into an apprenticeship that you should be doing. I don't think you should be working on live circuits until you're like a couple of years in and you're really, uh, you really have your, your wits about you and you really understand how things go and then you feel comfortable getting into that situation. So. Um, that's my two cents. Let's see what some of these commenters said. There's not a whole bunch of comments, but I think some people commented below it. See if anybody's like a hater. Uh, first one was Icarus04. If you don't feel safe, you're not out of line. Okay, yeah, I agree. Uh, osteoporosis said, what voltages? I can see what you're getting at. Like, are you being a uh, pansy about this? Are we talking like 12 volts and you don't wanna mess with it? Or, <laughs> uh, or are we talking like 10,000 volts, you know? But still, Electricity is electricity, current flows as current flows. So you need to respect it at, at all voltages in my opinion. Um, so the OP, the original poster said, I mostly work residential, so 240. So yeah, he's talking about just doing homes, not pulling the meter, having live energized conductors in there and messing around with them. Um, then that Doug replied, if you're on site and feel it's unsafe, it's your right to refuse. If he wants to work on live power lines, he can go right ahead. The right to refuse unsafe working condition is for your health and well-being. Can't make money for yourself and your family if you're injured or dead. Fuck your boss. Sounds like an asshat. I like that one. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good comment. Now, I'm not assuming that your boss is like a dick or anything. You just said he refuses to turn off utility lines for any reason. But you said, am I out of line for refusing? So I don't even know if you've refused yet or if this is just like something rattling around in your head about. Um. But you gotta understand too, 
we deal with electricity. It's electrical work, it's dangerous. So if you're not okay with that, you need to like maybe reflect a little bit on your choice of job to do. Like working with dogs, if you're afraid of getting bit by dogs, like why the fuck are you working with, you know, dogs every day? Um, just kind of think of that. Now there is in the dog world ways to mitigate that risk, but it's still, you're putting yourself in a situation like a snake handler jumping in a snake pit with fucking venomous snakes. It's like, you know, at a certain point you can't sit and bitch about it if you chose that, but there are things that you can do to minimize that risk. So um, understand that, 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 that like you not working on live conductors, we're not in support of you never doing it and that you shouldn't do it and that it's wrong to do. It's just, if you don't feel comfortable and you're not, you don't have enough training yet, then yes, definitely. If you refuse, like dude, uh, you're not in the wrong there. Uh, but at a certain point, I think it's smart for everybody to get trained on PP and how to work on live circuits. It just makes a better electrician out of you because there are going to be weird times where you're going to have to jump in and do something. And rather than being the one that's sitting back all the time, never jumping in because they're terrified because they don't know what the fuck's going on and how to do this stuff. The people that will jump in because they do know how to do it and they have experience are far more valuable to a company. But again, unnecessary risk, like it's not fucking worth it. There's no reward good enough for killing yourself. Um, last comment said sparky air. No, and if you can't do it safely or comfortably, that's when he should step in and do it himself. There's certainly hot work that I'll do and certain stuff I won't. Working on live services is something I will not do. I'm lucky enough my boss has told me every time that he's ever asked me to work on something hot. If you're not comfortable doing it, tell me and I will do it and I'll teach you how to do it safely. Um, not in a condescending way, in a way that shows me he's willing to do anything he would ask any of us to do. That's a good fucking boss, dude. That's a leader. That's not a boss sitting behind a desk barking fucking orders. That's a leader out in the field, actually like pulling his team and, you know, expecting out of them what he expects out of himself and, and like being there in the shit, doing the things. And, and that, that to me, that's just a killer leader. So that's awesome, dude. Um, He's one of the best electricians I've ever met. Incredibly smart and great electrician, and he can handle anything thrown at him. That's a leader, not a boss. That's funny. I should have actually just fucking read that first. But I hope that answers your question. Uh, not a single person bucked you on this. Now, if you go into Facebook groups and start asking this question, Facebook's a little bit more uh, on the hater aid side of the aisle. There's gonna be lots of people in there that are like, oh, you, you're like, you're just afraid. You need to like go be a different, be a plumber or something. Like, there's a lot of words I wanna say that's actually thrown away, but for the uh, political correctness of my brand, I will not say them here. <laughs> uh, but just be careful about your influences, right? If you're going on Instagram, Instagram seems to be a lot friendlier place. Most of the time, people seem really helpful when you're on Instagram. It's like a good community of electricians, hashtag electrician life and all of that stuff, sparky life. Um, people sharing their work, talking about stuff, leaving comments and, and stuff like that. So I think you're gonna get a, a good amount of like real feedback that's usable. Um, some of these Facebook groups are just, there's some royal uh, jerks, we'll say, uh, in these Facebook groups. And there's a lot of just opinionated hype uh, you know, it, a lot of people will like cite or they won't cite codes, but they'll tell you you're, you're supposed to do this or you shouldn't do this because it's code. It's like, well, cite your code source. And then they got like nothing flatline because they don't actually know. They just heard it from a guy that heard it from a guy that heard it from somebody else. So uh, just be careful about like who you're getting this answer, this opinion from and why it's formulated the way that it is. So one last time, just so that you know, it is never uh, it, it's never okay to like just m not think about risk and just jump into a situation. If you're gonna work on things live, always use proper PPE. Make sure that if you don't know how to do stuff or you don't know about PPE and know what the different levels of gloves are and why you would use a flash suit, um, why you would use like a mask, uh, you know, helmet, all of these different things that we have, rubber mats, rubber boots, all of it, uh, get some training on it. Ask some of the, like ask your boss or, or start like digging a little bit and reading because all this stuff's online. You can Google what all of these things are. Um, but I don't think you should be working on live circuits until you've been trained and you've been doing this long enough so that you really understand like, oh, if I drop a screw over here, the screw's gonna go down, might end up having an arc flash and all this stuff. And you're not gonna know what the fuck that is after a month of, of being a helper, working on like running new construction, you know, residential homes. You're just not, you're not gonna understand that. So like throwing you into a switch gear in an industrial facility, like that's the stupidest thing. So just always make sure that you've got some time in service, that you're always asking questions, you're always chasing more training. 
um, and ask to be trained and ask to be shown. That's a really important thing a lot of people don't do because we're men, right? Machismo, we just want to jump in and impress everybody and just fucking do it. And that's where a lot of problems and injuries and fatalities and things like that happen. So just always, um, always ask somebody to show you how to do something. And then if you don't understand it, ask questions. But uh, a lot of times if you just ask how to do things, you're not gonna actually understand because you haven't seen it shown to you. So don't work on live circuits if you don't have to. I think 99% of the work out there does not need to be worked on in an energized state. I actually recommend everybody always turn power off. Uh, but there are those situations where it's not practical. You might be at a Home Depot and there's like, middle of like the, the busiest, you know, like Christmas day or something and you got some emergency call out and you can't flip a breaker off because they're running like thousands of people through cash registers. And if you shut that one breaker down, it might kill all the fucking cash registers. And then you might have a lawsuit from them over like millions lost over a certain period of time. You know, there's just dumb stuff like, and that's all money too. That's not even a life safety thing. That's just like a company doesn't want to lose money. So you're putting your life in, in risk. But again, when you can, when you understand how electricity flows, how current flows, how people get shocked, electrocuted, you understand the safety of different PPE and how to work on energized circuits. It's really not as bad as you'd think, but you do need that training. Otherwise don't fucking touch this stuff. So thank you so much for your comment. Uh, you guys head over to Reddit to the electrician you subreddit. Feel free to ask some questions. I'll pop some videos out of it. Make sure they're good questions though. This was a good question. So love you crazy fuckers. See you soon.